Okay, it's uh, another video. Hopefully uh, you find this video edifying as well as exhorting. Shalom to the nation of Israel beginning with the elect. Really the elect, which is the true nation of Israel right now, is begins with the elect. Shalom to you brothers and sisters of the household of faith. All praises and glories due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai Bar Shem, Rekach and uh, once again, like I said earlier, it's another video. Now, in this video, I'm just going to land back off what um, uh, Elder Karatazar, up and coming Elder Karatazar of GMS Vegas, said in this video here. Um, this is the, a video he did <clears throat> in responding to uh, King Nathaniel's use of, of the book of Job 10 and 14 to say that that's talking about the mark the mark of the beast which is total deception and if you're not learned you know if you uh, are not one to uh, research and to study as it is written study to show thyself approved uh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth there it is rightly dividing the word of truth as it is written, precept upon precept, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You will see that Job 10 and 14 is not a precept for Revelation 13, 16. And the use of the term mark in Job 10 and 14 is totally different from uh, the term mark in uh, Revelation 13, 16. But see, if you don't research and you don't study, you as a Hebrew Israelite, you wouldn't know this. And you'd be deceived by slicksters like King Nathaniel with all his gimmicks, with all his fancy garments, with all his fancy production. You'd be, you'd be deceived by that clown. All right? And, and that is why we, in particular, Great Millstone beginning to fall the pastor, that is why we are faithful watchmen and endowed with the Holy Spirit to continually watch these false teachers, these false prophets, and to warn you of them, as it is written in um, Ezekiel 3 and 17, the, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, have said, He have made us watchmen unto the house of Israel, in particular the elect. And these are some of the things, we, not only are we watching for prophecy, for prophecies to be fulfilled, we're also watching the false teachers and the false apostles and the false prophets that are in this Israelite thing of ours. And as soon as they come up with their their uh, unsound doctrine we warn you of them and those that will listen they very well may gain their life okay because the false teachers and the false prophets you know the the, the false apostles they're out to, they're really hunting for your life okay they're hunting for your soul all right with their unsound doctrine and if you listen to them, you surely will, and you believe in them, you surely will be destroyed. As, as Yahweh Shai said, he said, um, uh, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall wear, fall into the ditch. Which is a metaphor for you, you definitely lose your life. But if you hearken unto sound doctrine, you, you will be delivered, you will be saved. Okay, that's how important it is. It's, it's, it comes down to a life and death situation, man. It comes down to a life and death situation. So having said all that, let's just jump right into the video and take it from there. You know, the everlasting Father, the mighty God, they try to bring out Isaiah 9 and 6, you know, and, 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 and misuse what it actually mean and represent it. So um, if you was to watch past that, they bring out Revelation 19, where it mentions the the MOT to the beat. And you're going to see how just how slick Nate truly is. He's really a, a, a snake oil salesman. Mm -hmm. All right. If, you, if you're not um, grounded and rooted, and if, if you don't have the spirit on you, then uh, he'll get. Yeah, like the brother said, they're really slick. And, and that's recorded in scripture. Okay, that's recorded in scripture. Um, one scripture that comes to mind is um, 
Ezekiel the 13th chapter and you're going to see an example of that in this video man how slick that Nathaniel character really is but he's only slick to those that are not of the elect he's only slick to the non-elect the, the, the hopeful elect they'll see right through him and keep moving he can he can't out slick the elect as it is written if if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect it's not possible but let's let's begin here uh, now look at the subheading here false prophets condemned and right now as it stands king nathaniel is a false prophet he's a false teacher he's a false apostle which the word apostle just means sent away all right that's all it means it's from the the greek apostolos which means sent away he's a false teacher he's a false a prophet he's a false prophet and he's a false he's a false apostle that's really what he is right now. Now, if he repents and the how about Shemiah shall accept him, then there's nothing I can say. I, this, um, as it is written, who art thou that judges another man's servant? But as it stands right now, based on, on what we see and based on what we hear, the doctrine that's coming from this guy, every week he's changing the doctrine. You know, he, he's perverting the truth. And the fact that we blatantly see him mock the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son and defend anyone who does it, like recently uh, I heard a video where he was defending the, the Lima, we call him the Lima, you know, uh, the uh, Bubble Eyes Part 2, you know, uh, Deacon I Thun. Uh, he was defending him for saying, uh, um, uh, you can call the Most High Yo Play Yogurt. Nate was saying, uh, because he said that, those guys were mad, they were mad, you know, as if Deacon I Thun did a good thing in saying that. No, that was mockery, man. He was, he, he was mocking the Heavenly Father. We call the Heavenly Father Yo Play Yoga. What kind of shit is that, man? <laughs> and, and, and then they were boasting about nothing happening to Deacon Nathan. So what? The scriptures say because a sentence against an evil work, and that was an evil work. Let's get that, man. Let's get that. I'll tell you what, when that, when the, the when Yahweh Hashem Yashai unleashed the gates of hell, evil the gates of the hell and evil upon you guys it, it probably won't stop man that's when you guys are going to be humbled okay because right now you, you you motherfuckers are proud i'm talking about you motherfuckers that die uic you you're proud as shit man you're talking all kind of shit because evil because sent uh judgment hasn't been pronounced on you yet not not look just because judgment hasn't pronounced on hasn't been pronounced on you yet doesn't mean it's not coming okay you do the you do the crime, you're gonna do the time. <laughs> uh, Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. Because sentence against an evil work, and that was an evil work. When you make the statement, remember, uh, it's not that which goeth into a man that defileth him, but that which cometh out. Yeah, I wish I said that. Now, out of Deacon I Thun's mouth, he said, "You can call the Most High your play yoga." That that was not funny. There's nothing funny about that. And then Nate said, "Oh, because the brother told a joke." That wasn't a, a, a told a joke. You don't joke. You don't joke with the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man. You don't joke with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Period. You don't do that, okay? <laughs> because the brother told a joke. That's what King Nathaniel said. King Nathaniel can say anything. He's 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 the Most High. He's 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 God. He can say anything, okay? <laughs> Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, and, and that's what they said. That's what, in particular, that's what Nathaniel said. Uh, because nothing happened to the brother. Yeah, so thus far, nothing, nothing happened to him for what he said. Remember, uh, a thousand years to us is as one day to the Lord. Okay? Did you forget that? The Lord's time is far different than our time. Okay? Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Yeah, like case in point, the day that Deacon Ithan said that, he, he, he didn't get the, the wapple zapple from the Heavenly Father because he did, that it didn't happen to him. That means the Heavenly Father has forgotten about it. That means the Heavenly Father is not going to act upon it. No, wrong. Okay, you don't make mockery of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay. Because, um, uh, again, it's written, Galatians 6 and 7, Be not deceived, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you mock the Heavenly Father, you're going to reap your judgment. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, 
Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You see that? You, you see that? Uh, let's read that in the NLT. When a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it is safe to do wrong. You see? And then they, then they, then they even boast in it. Yeah, nothing happened to me. Yeah, I did this. Now. Yeah, okay, for now, yeah. You never know what the next day will bring. You know, there's old saying, what a difference a day makes. Okay, Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel 13 and 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. And, and we definitely see that concerning this mark of the beast, the MOTB. Okay. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Right. Thus saith the Lord power, his name is Yahweh, woe unto the foolish prophets that, pro that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. That's these guys, man. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts, right? Meaning they're slick. They're slick. Okay, and, and this is a perfect example. Let's keep going. This guy here, this guy here, this character right here, with all his glitz and glory, all right? And that's one of the reasons why he's able to hoodwink the simple, the simple belief of every word. That's one of the reasons why, because he got all this, he got the background going, he got the, 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 the super fan, the Captain Jerk, I mean Kirk, <laughs> the Captain Kirk garments, like he's a member of the Starship, like he's a captain of the Starship Enterprise called the IUIC, you know, he got all that nonsense going on there, and that gives you the illusion, you simple-minded individuals, that give you the illusion that the Heavenly Father's really dealing with him, you know, uh, uh, he's a... He's a um, he's a well learned, well studied prophet, and the Holy Spirit is abounding with him. And as it stands right now, the answer to that is no. Because if it was, if the Holy Spirit was abounding with this guy, you'd learn the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You'd learn it from this guy. Okay, a name or names that he taught more than twenty five years ago. It ain't like it's not like he don't know the names. He's just denounced the name. And that's also written in Jude, even denying the very Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's written in Second Peter, that's written in Jude. So there you go, but let's move on. Get over on you pretty quickly. All right, that's why you got to constantly, you know, you got you to gotta be prudent, man. And that's something it's obvious that, they uh, be in a trance. And that's something that a lot of Israelites are not prudent. Okay, and, and the Bible has something to say about being prudent, a prudent man. Okay, and we may look up the word in the, uh, in, in the Hebrew, prudent man. Let's see what that says. All right, uh, let's see. Psalm 14 and 15. The simple believe of every word, and that's the majority of Israelites out there in these different groups. The majority of them are simple. And they believe, as long as the guy has that look like this, okay, <laughs> this is why, this is why, this is why uh, he wears those garments. It's, it's a part of his deceptive tactic, okay? It's the same thing with the wacky tacky preacher. The wacky tacky preacher wears the wears the three thousand dollar suits, two thousand dollar suits. He has to look clean, you know, because that's part of his deception, you know. And and most uh, again, even Yahweh Shai cursed out the Jews when they went to see uh, John the Baptist. When they went to see his his ministry, they thought they was going to see a sharp dressed man, you know. And 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 when they saw what they saw. Uh, a rough looking man wearing a rough garment they they were um uh they were offended they were offended and that's why Yahweh Shai said what the hell did you think you went out to see a man clothed with soft remnant which that was not the case with John the Baptist that was not the case really with the prophets the prophets didn't wear soft garments the prophets wore rough garments the scriptures clearly tell us this okay the prophets were known to wear rough garments and to live a rough life an austere life Okay, in the book of Hebrews 11 chapter, it goes into all the adversities that the prophets endured, the true prophets, not the false ones. The false ones, they live lavishly. 
But the true prophets, they endured nothing but adversity, man, as being men of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. Okay, so those are facts. Um, let me get that scripture. Oh, bear with me for a minute. Come on. There we go. Uh, so we're going to look up the word uh, prudent. Again, let's read that one more time. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So let's get the definition for prudent in the uh, Hebrew. All right, prudent. Ira wom, Ira wom, Ira wom. Right, and it says, uh, see, subtle, shrewd, crafty, sly, sensible. That's how we're supposed to be within this knowledge is truth. We're supposed to be subtle. We're supposed to be shrewd, crafty, sly, and sensible. In other words, when we hear something, we're supposed to check it out for ourselves. As it is written, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So you hear something and you fully don't understand it, you are supposed to look it up for yourself, get the facts for yourself. That way when you get the answer, you, you are fully persuaded in your, in your own mind that you know you have the truth. That's what a sensible man would do. That's what a prudent man would would do so now you know the definition of prudent to be crafty to be subtle to be cunning okay so let's go back to the video his zombies they'd be in a trance and they'll listen to everything that this man is saying without the simple believe of every word the evaluating you know what he's actually saying because the scriptures say um the child of man is in his reasoning that's how you know if a, if a tree has been dressed. So listen to this real quick. That sat on the horse and against his army. That's what you read in Second Ezra thirteen. Go ahead. And the beast was taken. And the beast was taken. And seven with, heads and two horns. Seven with, heads and ten horns. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And with him the false prophet. That's the church system. Go ahead. That wrought miracles before him. That's the technology. Go ahead. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. the, that's, hey, hey, give me the mark of the beast. Um, uh, John, is it John ten fourteen? Uh, now listen to this. Joe, Joe ten fourteen. Joe, get that for me. Yeah. Thank y'all. Y'all don't get old. Help me. Come on. Job chapter 10 and verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. That's the mark right there. Now go back to Revelation. So basically he's saying that that's the mark of the beast. That's the mark that the apostle John saw on the island of Patmos. Okay, that's, that's the mark. And another precept for the mark is Job 10 and 14. Total deception, man. And, and if you're not prudent, then you would actually fall for that for that uh, uh, bit of slick, slickery <laughs> if that's a word you, you'd fall for that nonsense coupled with the fact that he's got the super duper flashy garments and that super duper background with the 4k cameras rolling you'd fall for that shit man you see the simple believe of every word let's say that again come on Job chapter 10 and verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. That's the mark right there. Now go back to Revelation. <laughs> so you see how slick he oh was to God. pull that out. Really? Now that verse that he, that they. Really, King Nathaniel? That's the mark. Job 10 and 14. If, if I sin, thou markest me. That's the mark. That's the mark that Revelation 13, 16 is talking about. Really? Really? <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. Went to, it has nothing to do exactly. with the mark spoken of in Revelation 13. Absolutely nothing. The only connection there is the word, the use of the word mark, which shows you the limitation of the English language. Because we, we, we need to read uh, Revelation 13, 16, and it's in the original tongue, which would be the Hebrew and then the Greek. And we you to read Job 10 and 14 in its original tongue, which would be which would be the Hebrew, you'd see it's two different words, man. 
But the limitation of the English language, they both use the word mock. So Nate, on the simple-minded, the dullards, he's able to get away with that shit. He's able to just read the word mock. And, and then the people that don't study, they, they're, just, they're just like, like, like uh, Pastor Talk Holland. They're just a bunch of zombies and they're blinded by all that, all that, gl that glamour. That that sh uh, that shiny suit that this guy is wearing, they're, they're blinded by that. They'll just simply believe it. Oh yeah, see that, see that's deep, man. See, that proves that the mark is sin. That's deep. You see, you see, you see the folly. And and this guy, King Nathaniel, he's gonna pay. He's gonna pay for his deception, whether he knows it or not. He's gonna pay. Okay. Straight up and down deception, man. I'll say that again. One more time. And then thou markest me. Thank y'all. Y'all don't get old. Help me. Come on. Job chapter 10 and verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. That's the mark. Right there. Now go back to Revelation. So you see how slick he was to pull that out? Hmm. Now that verse that he that they went to. It has nothing to do with the mark spoken of in Revelation 13. And that's why that's why we read in Ezekiel 13, O Israel, thy prophets are slick. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert, which means they're slick. That was just an example right there of that slickery and trickery. Okay? Let's move on. In 14 and 15, uh, 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 1920 the mark of the beast that's what we're dealing with this scripture this uh, uh verse that he called for that they read it has no relation to the mark of the beast no nope, not so but not at all not at all not at all because the, the word mark is in it exactly he was so quick to use it and again, if you were to read both scriptures in their original tongue, you would see the big difference. You'd see the big difference. But it, once again, it shows you the limitation of the English language because the word mark is used for both scriptures. Job 10 and 14 and uh, Revelation 13, 16. But read them in their original tongue. You'll see the big difference, man. So if you're simple, it would have just, you know, went right over your head. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's why scripture say in Proverbs, the simple believer for every word, but the prudent look well to his going. And this guy, like I said before, no, forgive me. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, this guy, he's going to pay for his deception, man. He's going to pay. So I'm going to run it back one more time so you can see that, and then we're going to go to the, the scripture. He read in Second Ezra 13. Go ahead. And the beast was taken. And the beast was taken. And seven with, heads and two horns. Seven and with, heads and ten horns. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And with him, the false prophet. That's the church system. Go ahead. That wrought miracles before him. That's the technology. Go ahead. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. the, that's, hey, hey, give me the mark of the beast. Um, uh, John, is it John 10, 14? Job, Job 10, 14. Job. Get that for me. Thank y'all. Y'all don't get old. Help me. Come on. Job chapter 10 and verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. That's the mark. Right there. Now go back to Revelation. And then he got all them stupid sound effects to, uh, to uh, back that nonsense up. That's the mark. No, it's not the mark. It's not the mark according to Revelation thirteen sixteen. Okay. Now, is it a sin to take that chip, which is the mark? The answer is yes, of course. But it's it's not what they're saying. IUIC is saying that the mark of the beast spoken of in Revelation thirteen sixteen is sin, sin in itself. Okay, sin in itself, which which is totally stupid. Okay, because it says you can't, you won't be able to buy or sell without that mark. The time is coming you won't be able to buy or sell without that mark. So so they're telling you, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you sin. <laughs> unless you sin, which they say is the mark, then you won't be able to buy or sell. Because you won't be able to buy or sell if you don't have the mark. 
That doesn't make any kind of sense. That's totally illogical, okay? But again, the simple belief of every word. <clears throat> Let's go to that verse, because this verse has been used before, brought up before in this uh, topic. I believe when we went back and forth with um, believers of the way, this was one of the verses that they referred to and were used in their argument to say that the mark is, uh, is, is sin. Right? So, Job 10 and 14, if I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. So, what is this actually saying? If I go off, if I, if I break your law, you're going to observe me, you're going to take note of me, mm -hmm. and then you're not going to allow me to escape from that. Now, a precept that would go with that, if uh, Job 10 and 14... Okay, uh, let's go to Job 10 and 14 right quick. Now I'll show you a precept that would go with it. Job 10 and 14. Let me make sure it was Job who said it. Job despairs of the, whole, the Heavenly Father's dealings. So it's actually Job who said these words. Job 10 and 14. If I sin, then, then thou mockest me. And, and thou will not acquit me from mine iniquity, right? The thou that mockest me, that's the Heavenly Father. If, if we sin, the Heavenly Father sees our sins, okay? And then he judges us, judges us accordingly. He mocks us as in he watches us and he judges us accordingly. Let's read that DNLT. Was to uh, 13, yet your real motive, your true intent was to watch me and if I sinned, you would not forget my guilt. Okay? You would not forget my guilt. Right, he would he would pun he would punish us accordingly. Okay. Now let's let's look up that uh now a precept that would go with that is mark them um as a matter of fact, uh, ma, ma, let's first let's look up the word in the Hebrew, because it the use of the term uh, mark is to watch. You, it, that's that's what that means in that in that verse to watch. Thou markest me. Right, Shema, Shema means to watch that's the hebrew word for watch okay see to keep god observe to watch give heed okay to keep god to keep watch and ward protect save life watch as in a watchman to watch for so you watch you, you watch the guy sin and you, you pronounce judgment on him. That's what the Heavenly Father does. He watches us sin. And then he pronounces judgment, judgment on us. So you get the word. The, 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 it, it's unanimous. To watch. That's what the word means uh, here for Mark in Job 10 and 14. Now, again, like I said, that would link up with Romans 16 and 17. However, the, the word there is in the Greek. All right, Romans 16 and 17. What's it say there? Let me see if I'm correct. Romans 16 and 17. Right. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mock them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Mock them means watch them. Watch them. Let's read that in the NLT. This was an, uh, an instruction the Apostle Paul gave to the Israelites in Rome. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to that what, to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. That's, that's, that's our earnest warning. Begin to the past down down. That's the same thing we're telling you now. Watch for... These these individuals like the IUIC, in particular King Nathaniel, they're causing divisions. 
all right because they're, they're teaching things that are contrary to sound doctrine so they're causing divisions in israel and they're really set up to do that because um you know the heavenly father said he set up the false prophets you know to because the path of truth is so narrow only one man can tread it at a time the reason why it's so narrow is because you got all these false prophets and false teachers false apostles and there are more false prophets false teachers false prophets false teachers false prophets and false apostles then they are true ones okay so you see the word watch all right the for the word mark there just like in job 10 to 14 it was to watch watch if the guy sins you watch him and then you pronounce judgment the same thing with romans 16 and 17 you watch out for those that cause divisions so that would be a perfect precept for job 10 and uh, 14 you know in particular with the word mark, uh, mark which means to watch okay uh bear with me for a minute what the hell is going on now? Oh, come on. Yeah, it looks like this thing is frozen. Ain't nothing but Satan. Alright, hold on. Let's do this. Nothing but Satan. Let's try this again. Alright, Romans 16 and 17. Romans 16 and 17. We want to look up the uh, we want to look up the Greek word there for watch. See what it says. Or oh, rather for mock, not for watch, for mock, mock them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine and avoid them. Right. So here's the Greek word for mock there, skopeo. Right. Strong's G forty six forty eight, skopeo. Scarpeo. Scarpeo, right? And what does it say here? To look at. In other words, watch. Observe. Contemplate. To fix one's eyes upon. So you're watching. Direct one's attention to anyone. Right. It's, it's the same thing with uh, Job 10 and 14. The Lord is, he's, has his eyes fixed upon you when you sin. So he can mock your sin and judge you. That's what that mark is talking about. That's not talking about the mark. That the mark in Re Revelation thirteen sixteen is something totally different based upon the Greek word. the 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 Greek The Greek word for in Romans sixteen and seventeen for mark is skopeo, which means to watch. But the Greek word in Revelation thirteen sixteen is chiragma, which means a thing inserted, something far different than uh, what is written in. Uh, Romans 16 and 17, or even Job 10 and 14. Something far different is written in Revelation 13, 16. But see, this proves one thing, that a lot of these Israelites that are taken by a guy like Nate, they're not, they're, they're monkeys, they're parrots, they're toads. They're not owls and dragons. You see, the, especially the dragon has the ability to see keenly, to see clearly, see through the dark clearly. So this is an example of being an owl and a dragon. You're looking up the meaning of words. You, you, you're researching. You don't just believe just because a guy is wearing a shiny garment. Okay? You see? And like I said, King Nathaniel, he's going to pay for his deception, man. He's going to pay for it. So, so Revelation 13 and 16, Revelation 13 and 16 is far different from Romans 16 and 17 and Job 10 and 14. Romans 16 and 17, Job 10 and 14, is talking about to watch. The mark that's used there is to watch. However, Revelation 13, 16, the mark that's used there is talking about something inserted into your body, as in the, the, the Greek word chiragma or kuragma, which means a thing inserted. And what's the only plausible answer for, for something being inserted in your body for, for total control? Well, that's that RFID chip. That's what it affords, total control. When you read about the dynamics of the chip, you see? But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. Said enough. Hopefully you're edified, and I'll see you in the next one.